In this recording, I will calculate the eigenvalues for the 3x3 three three matrix shown here. We have discussed the methods for calculating eigenvalues elsewhere, so I am not going to go into all those details. I am just going to get on with the calculation here. Remember we need to subtract lambda down the leading diagonal and then take the determinant. So that's debt of m minus lambda i where i is the 3 by 3 unit matrix and that's to be written as 1 minus lambda negative 1 2 negative 1 2 minus lambda negative 1 2 minus 1 7 minus lambda I'm just going to expand that determinant I can't see any zeros anywhere, so I might as well just go straight across the top row. So that's 1 minus lambda multiplied by, and I'll do the 2 by 2 bits immediately. 2 minus lambda times 7 minus lambda. Subtract negative 1 times negative 1. That's plus 1. That's the first term. Moving along the top row, the next entry is negative 1 this one. But we alternate the sign, so the next term should be plus 1. And I won't write the 1. Then we need the 2 by 2 determinant formed from the negative 1 over here and the 7 minus lambda here. So that's negative 7 minus lambda. Subtract, and now we want the terms minus 1 times 2. Subtracting minus 1 times 2 makes plus 2. And then the last term, we start with the 2, and we need 1 minus 2 into 2 minus lambda. Remember that's called the characteristic equation. Well, it's not an equation yet. It's an equation if we make it equal to zero. And of course that's what we've got to do to find the lambda. Now, elsewhere, remember when we did something like this, I recommended keeping the 1 minus lambda that we see at the front, just in case it's going to be a factor. So, I'll continue by sorting out the stuff in the square brackets. That's going to be negative lambda times negative lambda is lambda squared. Minus 7 lambda minus another 2 lambda is minus 9 lambda. And then there's two 7s of 14, but there's one to subtract, so that's 13. Moving on, we've got minus minus is plus lambda. And we've got negative 7 and plus 2, so that's minus 5. And then in the last term, we've got, I'll leave the 2 outside for the moment, we've got 1 minus 4 plus 2 lambda. That's getting a bit better, but there's still a way to go. Leave the first term intact for the moment. You never know, there could still be a factor of 1 minus lambda if we were lucky. So that's plus lambda minus 5. And then we've got in the brackets here, 1 subtract 4. That's negative 3, but it's multiplied by 2, so that's negative 6. And we've got 2 times 2 lambda is plus 4 lambda. So altogether, that's 1 minus lambda and a squared minus 9 lambda plus 13. And then altogether, left after there is 4 and 1 is 5 lambda minus 11. Oh dear, that's a pity. 1 minus lambda is not a factor in this one. Well, it was worth hoping, but it didn't work out here. So I'm afraid we've now got to just multiply out the other brackets. So that's negative lambda cubed. That's the highest power. Then there will be 1 times lambda squared and also minus 9 
times another negative 1. That's plus 1. So plus 10 lambda squared. Then for the lambda terms, there will be 1 times minus 9 lambda and a further negative 13. That's minus 22 lambda. And finally, there'll be 1 times 13. And still, there'll be plus 5 lambda minus 11. And remember, we had 0 on the right. We shouldn't lose track of that. So negative lambda cubed plus 10 lambda squared. And it's minus 22 plus 5 is minus 17 lambda. And 13 minus 11 is 2 equals 0. Now we don't have to, but I don't much like minus lambda cubed at the front, so I'm going to multiply the whole thing through by negative 1. Just a matter of changing the sign everywhere. So now we're, ta we're faced with the task of factorizing this cubic. We have to have faith that perhaps there will be one that we can spot easily. We could look at 1. Lambda equals 1. 1 minus 10 is minus 9, plus 17 is 8, minus 2, 6. That doesn't work. What about lambda equals 2? With lambda equals 2, we get 2 cubed is 8. Then minus 40, that's negative 32. Subtract the 2 now, makes negative 34. And two seventeens are 34. So that's negative 34 plus 34. So lambda equals 2 works. Lambda equals 2 is, is a solution. So lambda minus 2 is a factor. So now we can write our cubic as lambda minus 2 times a quadratic. You can do the long division if you like. When it's only a cubic, I prefer to do it by trial and error. The first term in the open bracket must be lambda squared in order to make a lambda cubed at the beginning. Now, written so far, we've got minus 2 lambda squared only. But we've got to make minus 10 of them. That can only come by introducing a lambda term, and it will have to be minus 8 lambda, so that the lambda squareds altogether contribute minus 10. Now as for the constant, we've already got a minus 2 in the first factor, and we've got to make minus 2 in the final expression, so that means that the constant must be 1. Assuming that we've correctly identified the lambda minus 2 factor, the quadratic factor must now be right. OK, so let's finish off by now solving. Lambda must be 2. I don't know whether you can see it or not very quickly, but I can see that that quadratic is not going to factorize easily. So I'm just going to go straight for the quadratic formula. Lambda equals 2, or lambda equals 8, plus or minus root 64 minus 4 over 2. So lambda equals 2, or 4 plus or minus. 64 minus 4 is 60, and 60 is 4 fifteens. If we pull out the 4 through the square root, it makes 2, which will cancel the 2 underneath. So we'll have plus or minus root 15. And those are the three eigenvalues. I'm not going to find the eigenvectors for this matrix. The lambda equals 2 wouldn't be too difficult, but I don't much fancy doing a Gaussian elimination with 4 plus or minus root 15s in the middle. That would be rather messy.